Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, uh, Krista Burns, here uh, at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians. The show is free and open to anyone to watch, as are the recordings that we do, so you, afterwards you can go on our website and see any of those. Um, the sessions um, go live at 10 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday mornings. Um, and we do a mixture of things here, presentations, um, book reviews, interviews, uh, mini training sessions, all sorts of things are out there. Um, we have uh, commission staff, Nebraska Library Commission staff, that will do presentations, and we uh, bring in guest speakers sometimes. And this morning, it's sort of a mixture. Um, once a month, we do, uh, it's usually the last Wednesday of the month, last show of the month, um, uh, Tech Talk with Michael Sowers. Michael Sowers is the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska <coughs> Library Commission. Hello. He's here sitting next to me. Um, and he talks about um, any new techie things that may have come up in the last month and sometimes brings on um, guests to present and talk. And that's what he's got today. So I will just hand over to you, Michael, to uh, do your um, intro to what you're bringing to us Great. today. Thanks, Kristen. Good morning, uh, everyone. As Krista said, my name is Michael Sowers, the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And this is the November 2013 Tech Talk. Uh, just to give a little bit of a backstory, recently we hosted the ARSL conference here in um, Omaha, Nebraska, and I bumped into a lot of different people that I haven't seen in quite a while, uh, some of them from Kansas, as our, our uh, guest is today. And um, so as I was going through the uh, program, uh, I always look for things that kind of like catch my eye and, and sound like really interesting or out of the box, and uh, Chris Ripple from the Central... Kansas Library System uh, was doing a presentation about using Excel to help rearrange your library. And I kind of looked at that and went, huh? <laughs> and so attended his session at the conference and then thought this was a pretty interesting topic and he, he, I think he convinced me. And so uh, I invited him onto the show and when I was mentioning this in our department meeting yesterday, uh, another one of our coworkers, Alana, kind of uh, heard that description and went, huh? Uh, and hopefully some of you did too, kind of uh, as to why you're here today. So, uh, Chris, you're with us on the line? Yes, I am. Well, good morning. And I guess what we're just going to do here is Chris has his presentation for us. So, Chris, why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do in Kansas, and uh, then let us know what you're doing here with Excel. All right. Thank you, Michael. I wish I want to thank Michael and Krista to give me a chance to um, give uh, share uh, this tool I've created with uh, librarians around the country. I use this tool to uh, design better libraries. I work for, as Michael said, I work for the Central Kansas Library System. We're headquartered in Great Bend, and I'm on a team of, team of consultants who evaluate libraries. And one of my jobs on this team is to draw alternative floor plans. And I use Excel spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet to draw these plans. And I call this Excel spreadsheet uh, Shelf Shuffler. Shelf Shuffler is a free uh, spreadsheet uh, which is available at this address. And um, can you see my arrow? Can you see my arrow when I move it around? Uh, yes, we can, and I'll just remind everyone that any time uh, Chris mentions a URL or a link to something, we'll be sure to put it in the show notes, so if you miss it during the presentation, it'll be available afterwards. All right, thank you. So if you type this URL into your web browser, it'll automatically download Shelf Shuffler. I created Shelf Shuffler in Microsoft Excel. Um, if you do not have Excel, you can use um, OpenOffice. OpenOffice is a free um, software suite which is available at this address and you use Calc. Calc is OpenOffice's version of Excel. When you download Shelf Shuffler you'll get uh, this document that you're looking at right now and along the bottom are a bunch of tabs. I'm going to go through the tabs to give you a, a tour and then at the end I'm going to actually draw a floor plan to show you how um, Shelf Shuffler works. The first tab is the blank grid and it's this grid that I use to draw out my floor plans. Each square is 12 inches by 12 inches to scale and I use this um, conversion table over here to create numbers that I put into my 
um, objects to actually put them to this uh, scale. Um, the next tab is the basic ideas, which introduces the principles that I use for drawing my um, my alternative plans. And so I just want to give you a basic idea of what those principles are. I use the grocery store model uh, for drawing my plans. And every customer in a grocery store, the most common products they buy are milk, meat, and bread. And to get to those products, you draw, you, sorry, walk a power path around the store, which takes you to a past, uh, takes you to those products. Those products are located at, uh, away from the front door and scattered around the store. When you take this power path to reach those products, you'll pass the primary display areas around the store. You'll also pass all the aisles. In the aisles will be signs which list the major products um, down that aisle. So by buying just these three products, you walk the entire store and you get a chance, you get exposure to everything that the store has. And then you go to the checkout registers, and at the checkout registers, you'll maybe see some more displays. But basically, this is the model I use. This grocery store model is what I use. Uh, for designing my libraries. The parts of this model that I use for designing my libraries are first to the power path around the library, to move you completely around the library. I also move, I also put the major popular media such as new books, DVDs, away from the front door to attract people to move around, to follow the path around the library. And I recommend signage to tell people what is available in the library. I have three examples of the, three examples of the layouts that I have drawn. Let's just look at one of them. Um, right over here on the left side is the front door of the library. And I begin the power path at the front door. And you can see the power path, the red line goes around the entire library. And it's past all of the major areas of the, of the library. It goes past the younger books, the reading area. Here's nonfiction over here. Here's fiction. The restrooms are down here. Here's the meeting room, children's area, and computers. I have moved the pop, some of the popular media uh, along the path, but down away from the front door. Here are the new book sections. Here's our rotating books in our library. Our system has a rotating book collection, and so the rotating books are placed here. Here's the DVDs. Uh, large print is over here, computers, etc. So you get the idea of, of, the, of the layout. Over here, if we move over here to the, uh, the steps, I take you step by step through the major, there's six steps that, uh, six major steps through the process of creating a layout. The first step is to use black lines to draw the walls of the library. I use little squares right here, like little squares like here, to draw my windows, to place my windows. And I use the same squares, but I, I get rid of the line, the contour line, to create my um, doors. Right over here are, um, are the uh, written instructions, basic instructions for doing each of these steps. So when, you, um, when, you, when I start doing my drawing, my, um, my floor plan uh, today, later on in this presentation, you will probably, you may get confused and forget um, how the, which, what to do. And so I want to tell you that you can come over here to these steps and it will give you the basic instructions. So you have, after this presentation, you have two ways of, of learning how to use Shelf Shuffler. You can watch the, this presentation that I'm doing now and you can also come and see written instructions step by step through the process. So step one is to draw the walls, the windows and the doors and to place them around the walls in the proper locations. Step two is that I draw my power path around the library. The power path would be a red line, and the, the way I design my red lines would depend on the shape and the size of the library and where the front door is located. 
if the library would be, say, a long, narrow library, I'd probably just want draw a power path straight down the middle of the library. If, but in this case, the, the, the library is a square. It's a fairly large square, and the front door is off to the side. So I draw, I'm going to draw a power path, kind of a racetrack around the library. My racetrack, my power path is about 6 to 10 feet from the outer walls so that I can place objects on both sides of the power path. And I keep my power path about 4 feet to 6 inches, 6 feet wide. I want it to be at least 4 feet wide so that it is wider than the space between the aisles so that it becomes a wide path that is easily identifiable and will attract people and allow them to move easily around the library. The next step, step three, is that I, in my mind, I imagine where I want my major spaces, my, my major um, my popular media to be located. Usually I do this when I'm measuring my library and looking it over and I usually don't write down where these, where these are but I've done it here so that you can see where I'm going. Um, the next step, step number four, is that um, I have, I draw out my furniture and my, I draw out the furniture and I arrange the furniture um, around the library. I draw the furniture and I make it to scale using that that um, that uh, table which I mentioned in the in the in the grid earlier and I will show you how to use that in just a moment. So I draw out my draw out my furniture. I use I usually write in something in there to tell what the furniture is. So right here I have written that DS means double sided shelves. SS means single-sided shells, tall or tall shells over six feet shorter or under six feet. So that if you if I blew this up uh, and made it larger, you would actually be able to see um, see the size, and you can see that it says DS tall. Here's a book cart. Here are some some. There's a magazine rack. There's some chairs. So identify what the what the objects are, and then I arrange them around the library where I want them. Step five is that I highlight the cells and then I color them. Well, come on. Hmm, there we go. I color them. I use the fill and I can color, color it in so that I can color my areas and then I actually then write out and label each of the areas. So that is step five. And step six, I add in the some um, callouts to identify where the signage is. So that right here, for example, there's I put in a sign. I tell what is on the sign and identify where the signs are. I also point out the important features, uh, unique features in the in the in the layout. One of the things I am pushing. I'm trying to get my librarians to do is to put chairs in the stacks. So I'd like to talk about that because uh, just for a moment, I am. I feel it is ridiculous that patrons are allowed to sit for 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 um, for hours, maybe at a computer, but they have to stand up to browse the stacks. So I think we should put chairs in the stacks so that people can sit down and spend time browsing. This also has another advantage in that it lowers people down so they can browse the lower shelves. It has been known for uh, decades that uh, libraries have known have observed for decades that the lower shelves do not get uh, do not circulate books on the lower shelves do not circulate well, and so by allowing people to sit down, they can browse this, browse the lower shelves, and the circulation of the lower shelves will go up. Um, I recommend putting little casters, putting casters on the chairs so they're easy to move around um, and then you can sit down and browse the shelves. The libraries that have done this say the patrons really like it and so I uh, recommend it. And so I talk about this idea on this, on, on this page right here. So 
are there any questions so far? I have covered, I believe, everything that I want to cover. Um, um, and so, are there any questions? Have there any have any questions come up yet? Uh, well, we don't have any from the audience yet. I, I know I have a couple, uh, but okay. uh, mine mine can easily uh, be at the end, or I, I can share some of them now if you'd like. Yeah, if anyone does if have you... any questions or want to know more about anything that um, Chris is showing us here, just type it into the question section, and we'll pass it along. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions you want to ask me now, Michael? Um. No, I, I think I'll let you keep going. Okay. So, sometimes they get answered anyway. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, I have now gone back to the blank grid, and so I'm now going to draw out a floor plan, show you how that it works. I have written um, right here, I have written the six steps uh, that, I have j that I just showed you to keep, to, uh, keep uh, both of us focused on what we want, what we want to accomplish here. So I'm going to begin by drawing out the walls, windows, and doors. I say on um, step one right up here, I say to measure your walls in feet and inches, and to measure everything else in inches. I'm going to show you why you do that right now. So I'm going to draw out um, a, a library, and I'm going to use this grid here. I'm going to go over a little bit draw out the grid, and so I use the black lines. And so I come up to Insert, Shapes, and click the line here to draw out a line. So um, these are, this is rep each, each number represents one foot, and so I'm going to make my library say uh, uh, 40 feet this way. And notice it is a blue line. I want a dark black line. So if I come up here and do a right click, come down to Format Shape, and I'm going to choose the line color, and I'm going to change it to a black line. Now I'm going to go to Line Style, and I'm, this is 0.75. I'm going to make it a thick black line. I'm going to change it to 2. So if I click Close, there I have my, my line, and it's 40, it's 40, sorry, 40, So if I say 40, if I want to make it, if my library is 40 feet and a half, 40 feet 6 inches, I drag out my line halfway, and there I have a 40 foot 6 inch line. And now I'm going to drag it down here, and there's one wall of my library. Now if I have another wall at the other end, I do a control C to copy and control V to paste, and it pastes another line, and so I'm going to move it down, and my library is going to be, say, 30 and a half, 30 and a half feet this way, and there we go. So now I can come down. So now I have the other line. I have the other wall. I'm going to go do. I'm going to go Control V again, and I produce the line. And now I'm going to produce it. I'm going to come over and get this line, and I'm just going to get this thing and just drag it down and make it vertical. And then control C, control V to create another one. So there are my walls. If I want to get rid of this part here, you can just highlight the area, do a control uh, do a right click and do clear contents and it clears the contents. And I can do the same thing right here. Actually, I can just backspace that one out there. So there's my walls. I'm now going to do some windows. Now, I would normally measure my windows um, and then place them correctly. But I'm just going to make some windows up. So I'm going to do an insert, shapes, come down and get a square. And I'm just going to draw out what I think would be about a two-foot window and make it a little wide. So each one of these is, uh, when there's 12 inches, there's another 12 inches. So there's a two-foot window. And um, I made a little square. So I'm going to, whoops, do a right click, come down to Format Shape. And I'm going to change the line color to black. 
and the line style. This time I'm going to, it says 2, I'm going to make it a 0.5. I'm going to make it a very thin, uh, thin, whoops, and then I do one more thing, format shape again, right click, format shape, I want my fill, I want to have put in my fill, I want my fill to be uh, white. So now I can place my windows. I'm going to make this left side my front door. So I'm going to put windows. And I have one window here, but I am going to put a bunch, I have a bunch of windows along the front of my library. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of windows. I'm doing control C, control V to paste. I drag them over. I spin them around. You can also spin a bunch if you just highlight and then hold down the shift. You can highlight a bunch of cells and then when you spin them, they will all spin at once. I can now drag them over and I can place them. There's one. There's two. Let's see, I'm going to make my windows even. So I'm going to put uh, my window is... Uh, two feet from this corner, and then the next window is two feet from that corner. So there we go. So there it's pretty equal. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I have two feet and two feet. Now in actuality, in reality, when I did it, I would of course measure my windows and place them exactly where they're supposed to be. I am. I have now windows in the front of my library. Um, I'm going to change this window to a door. It needs to be, I'm going to make it a six foot wide door. So there's two feet, there's three feet, there's four, five, six feet. It's a six foot wide door. So it has two doors, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I am going to click it. And then what I do is I'm going to now get rid of this line so it becomes an open space. So I right click, come down to format shape. And for the line color, I say no line, and there's my door. So I have an open door. So now I have, so I've finished step one. I've put in my windows, and I've put in my windows and doors and my walls. Now I'm going to draw my, this next step, if we look over here, the next step is to draw the power path. And I'm going to draw, I use my red line, so I'm going to get another line. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this line. I'm going to Control C, Control V, and paste it. I'm going to drag it down. My line, my power pass always begin at the front door. My line is too wide, it's too long, so I'm shortening it, and I want to change it to red. So I'm going to do a right click to bring up Format Shape, go to Line Color, and change it. Click down here and change it to red. So there's red. So my, my power path begins at the front door. And my, since my door is in the middle of the library, I have a power path down the center of my library. But I'm going to put, um, I'm going to extend the power path around so I have both a, a power path through the middle of the library and also around the edge. So I'm going to copy this again. Control V, Control C. Come over here. Paste it. I want it to be about six feet from the outer wall, at least six feet. One, two, three, four, five, six feet from the outer wall. And this is too long, so I'm going to shorten it. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one's too long. Along here, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I'm going to copy and control C, control V. I'm going to bring it down, put it about six feet, one, two, three, four, five, six.
So there's my power path around the library. So I've done my power path. The next step, step number Okay. Um, step three is that I locate the main area. So I don't actually write out. I do in my mind. I decide where my areas are. So I'm going to have, let's say, my children's area over here. Or let's, uh, I'll repeat that. I'll make my um, a reading area over here. I'll do a children's area here. I'll do uh, the computers over here. And um, let's say I'll put fiction over here and nonfiction here. So, so now what I need to do is um, I, um, I need to make the next step after I decide where I want stuff to be. I now need to draw out my furniture. So I'm not going to draw all, draw all the furniture. I'm just going to draw some of the furniture. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to make some shelving. So I have a uh, wing. Now here's where I show you where I use this. Uh, this conversion table right over here. Well, let me get over there. Come on, get over there. There we go. So my shelving, let's say, is I'm going to make first. I'm going to make double-sided shelving, and so it's 12 inches on each side. So that's 24 wide and 36 inches long. So 24 inches wide and 36 inches long, and it produces these numbers right here. So now I'm going to show you how I put where I put those numbers. Do a right click and I come down to size and properties. So it needs to be one side needs to be six. My height needs to be six. And when I say height, I'm not talking about height from the floor up. I'm talking about height along the floor in one direction. So we're doing a two dimensional thing. So I need to change that to six. And I change this to 0 0.9, 0 0.9. There we are. So there's the size, 6 by 9. And now I'm going to make it a, uh, change the color, fill. And let's make it a little lighter. And there it is. And now I'm going to label it, edit text, and I'm going to center it. So it's a double-sided shelf. Double-sided shelf. And let's change the double-sided shelf. Double-sided shelf. Now, so I've created one shelf. Now I can make a whole bunch of them. Control C, Control V. Con so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nine of them. Ten, eleven, twelve. So now I can move them out here, and I can locate them on uh, locate them in my space. I'm going to do a whole bunch of them. I'm going to hold down the the shift key and I can highlight a bunch of them. I can then rotate it. Now I can move them out and I can use these squares to measure the distance between them. Whoops. Whoops. These squares are to measure make sure there's three feet between each of the shelves. And I'm going to move it down. Et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. I think you get the point here. So those would be double-sided shelves, and I can go ahead and put them out, and 
Hey, Chris. Yes. Um, we got a question. Could you just maybe um, more slowly demonstrate how you're doing the rotating of the shapes? Oh, just okay. be homework. We got a question about like, that coming in. How? What was the keystrokes or whatever was used to make okay. it spin? <laughs> okay. I click on it, and then I move. There's a. You can see a little lever going out with a green uh, ball. If you put the arrow on your green ball, it allows you to spin it. Can you see that operation? Yeah, I don't and, know that, what, I, and and you, then if if you want to do a bunch, you hold down the shift key, and you can click several shelves at once. You you hold down the shift key, you can click a shelf, click the next shelf, click the next shelf, click the next shelf. Then you put the cross on it; it becomes, and you can then rotate all of them. Okay, and cool. you you do need to hold down your mouse button while you're doing that rotate. Yes, oh, I'm yes. sorry. Yes, yeah. yes. You need to hold down the route mouse button when you do the rotate. Cool. Yes. The, the, the person who asked says, awesome, thanks. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I don't know what it looks like at their end. That's the problem with, uh, so I don't know how much they can actually see uh, what I'm doing. In, oh, it, anyway. We're seeing it exactly as you're seeing it coming through. Okay. There. Yeah, yep. I just need to explain everything. <laughs> yep. Okay, so there's the shelving. So to do to do small shelving, to do single-sided shelving, you would do the exact same thing. Whoops, you do insert, and you draw it out, except you, um, your, your single-sided shelving might be 12, would be 36 inches long, but it might be only 12 inches um, wide. And so you would produce a smaller shelf. I right-click. I, I do the size and properties. And so you can see it's, I changed the the to three and then nine point nine point three point nine and that produces the single side shelf. I can then you know I can do the format shape, change the change the color. I I keep the lines. I do not make one thing I have learned is not to make these lines and the shelf the same color. If you make them the same color, it's very hard to to get them lined up. You need the contrast between the line around the shelves and the shelf color to actually be able to put them in a row. <laughs> it gets very hard if they're the exact same color. You can't tell how um, how long how where to exactly place it, and you, and you stumble a lot more. So, but then to change the color, so I just change. I go format shape. I just change the fill color to some other color and then to to draw to put in the label of what this thing is I do a right click I click on edit text I do some centering and I do single shelf shelf whoops and I uh, you always have to change the color so then I can go if I don't change it I can then whoops I can then highlight and then change the color to black. And so then again, I can, you know, I can just and just lay them out there along the side. So that, so you get the idea of that. To draw a table, I do the same thing. You can draw two tables. You can draw a square table. I'm going to show you a round table. So I can draw a round table by choosing the round one. Just draw out the round table. And let's say my tables are um, 36 inches. Um, the diameter is 36 inches. So if I do a right click, I do the size, I change both of them to this 9.9. 9. Whoops, yeah, well, that doesn't matter. 0.9. So there's my round table. Now I can make things, I can, instead of just doing a color, I can do, if I come down to the format shape, instead of just choosing the fill color, I can come down and do a picture. So I can make it a wooden table. See, if I come down here and then click down here to my texture, I have a bunch of textures. So I can make it a wooden table. And then I do edit text. So now I say it's a wooden table. And if I, if I want my letters to be, uh, to go across properly, I can change. If I highlight it, I can then lower the font size a little bit, so now it's, and then, 
and then I can highlight it and I can make it a wooden table. So then I can place my wooden table where I want it. I can make, um, I, do, I don't do the chairs around the table, it just ends up being cluttered. I just leave enough space. I use my 42 inches around to make sure there's enough space around my tables. Um, if, I, if I had shelves, if these shelves were against the wall, You, you should not do, you need, uh, ADA requires you need enough space between the shelves so that a wheelchair can spin around. So that's what I use this 42 inch square for. I do, usually do the 42 inch square. If I were to put shelves out here, I quite often try to make 42 inches around the outside, the aisle around it, through 42 inches or four feet around so that um, I create enough space to move around the outside of the wall, unless I'm putting it up against the wall. So I've shown you, basically, these are the, the um, I use the, the rectangles and the rounds to create um, all of my furniture, and then I put it around the library. Now, if I wanted to do the spaces, uh, now we've talked about the next step is to color and label the, the areas. So I can highlight an area. I said, I think I said this is going to be the fiction over here, so I'm going to give it a color. And so I've highlighted the area. Now I do a right click and I go down to Format Cells and I choose a color. And then I'm going to label this fiction. Let's see how am I doing on my time? Okay, fiction. Whoops. Well, there we are, fiction, and I pump up the size to about 26, I think, is the, oh, 24. So there's my fiction. If I want to do nonfiction areas, I can come down here. Format cells, choose a different color. Um, I can click on more colors and come down here and choose a different color. And I can say I label this nonfiction. Well, so I can label if I want to do. I said I think I think I said this was children's area, or whatever, or the reading area. You would do the same thing. You just label the areas and you put in, you, you fill them up with what you want and then you label them. Whoops. The last, the last thing I do, step number six, is I do the call outs to identify where signage goes and the unique features. So again, I come up to insert, come to shapes, and the callouts are down here at the bottom. So I draw a callout, I do a right click, I go to the format the shape, the fill I change to white. I used the line color as red, but you know you can use it, do any color you want. And then I click close. And now I, if I right click again, I can go edit text. I need to change this. It always wants to go to white. I need to change it to black. And so now I can type in um, sign. I quite often use hanging signs for the major areas, so I tried to use hanging signs, a big sign. Oops. And 
and then to uh, if I go copy, if I go copy, and then paste, it'll create another one. So then you can put in your signage. And pretty much uh, we're done. Now, quite often for our libraries, um, and I do these 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 callouts. I do several things. Um, the purpose of the callouts: you, as the creator, will not need callouts generally. Um, what these callouts I, I I put in the signage. You may need the signage ones, but I also put out distinct features if I have unique features like uh, um, like the like the chairs. If I put chairs in the aisles, I might put a call out explaining why I'm putting chairs in the aisles. The purpose of the call outs is to help people who, other than you, your board, uh, other staff members, maybe the public, explain to them what all the features are of your, of your layout, to identify the features of your layout, the things that aren't obvious. Um, the one last thing quite often, I make multiple copies, uh, uh, sorry, I make, uh, what I, what often I do is that I make one layout, I may present to my libraries several alternative layouts. It's easy to make alternative layouts, to make multiple copies. If you come down here on the, where it says blank grid and do a right click, you can go move and copy. You click there, you decide where you want it to be before ideas, and I create create a copy. It now makes a copy. So now I have the original, and I have this one, a second one. I can make, um, I can rename it as um, alternative two. And now it's easy that I've got it. I can now um, change things around. I can um, change, have the shelves run this way. Um, um, I can make, I could just rearrange it and make a, uh, make a second and, uh, you know, just, just make any changes. So it's easy once you have all the furniture in, it's easy to create alternatives by just making copies and then rearranging the furniture. And so it's easy. You can do it within, within um, minutes of, you make a variety of alternatives. So I have... Um, I have uh, completed uh, my my demonstration. I would like to remind you that um, the things you saw, um, if you forget them, um, th uh, that you will have uh, this presentation as um, as this presentation. They're going to send you a link to this presentation. Plus, I want to go back that they have the steps right here. Uh, a, a brief description. Um, instructions for each of the steps, uh, in, uh, uh, a, a, a set of instructions for each of the steps. So uh, thank you very much. I now uh, will accept questions. All right. Thanks, Chris. Um, uh, we, we have a couple questions that have come in from the audience. We're going to get to those in just a sec because I'm going to start out with the question that usually comes from everybody who I say, this is what Chris is going to be talking about. Um, and and I, I mean, I see it makes sense, but Whatever gave you the idea to do this in Excel? I guess really, what, 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 where did this come from? Well, I originally what happened was um, I a librarian asked me to uh, a librarian asked me to make a layout, and so I drew um, a bunch of furniture to scale, and I printed it out, and it cut out about seventy or eighty little pieces, and I put them on a pile on my desk. And what happened was, as I was putting the the grid paper on my desk, the pile fell off on the floor. <laughs> and it fell right among all the computer wires. And I decided I didn't want to pick them up. And so <laughs> somehow it occurred to me to just draw it all on Excel. Um, so um, that's, that's how it happened. It was just uh, um, I didn't want to pick, pick up a bunch of little pieces of tiny, tiny pieces of paper a bunch among, among, among a bunch of computer wires. It was, I was just too lazy to do that, and those pieces of paper sat there for several months. <laughs> I mean, truly, they sat there for several months as just a pile uh, right there all among my computer wire. Well, I just went ahead and drew these things out. 
And it is so easy. Yes. This necessity yeah. is the mother of invention. I don't there want to There you go. There you go. Or laziness. Well, okay, that too. <laughs> Okay, Krista, you said we got some uh, audience um, questions? Some, I just, uh, yeah, one person did give a suggestion when people were asking about how to move things around. Yes. That you were clicking on dragging them. Um, someone says also if you click on a shape, you can also move them in small increments using the arrow keys. So you can move them. Oh, yes. In a you certainly can. That's yeah. right. That's right. You can. You can. That is an excellent idea. Uh, I knew that and forgotten that. That is an excellent <laughs> idea. Thank you for, for mentioning that. That is true. You give a little more control, too, as you're kind of down this way a little that bit, over to the left a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, true. Then, I had forgotten that. Thank you for mentioning mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And then someone did have a question going back to when you were, when you were first, um, with your first example of this, that shelving that was in the center of the library, um, there, and actually I think this might have been answered with your um spinning things around, could they be moved to the opposite angle so that the desk can see across the floor of that area? Sure, sure, you can easily spin them, sure, yeah. you can easily spin them. Right. That's all I've got so far. Anyone does have any questions or comments or want to see anything else, um, let us know okay. in the uh, right. question section. Yep. And, and, and in the meantime, I've got a couple uh, more. So, Chris, have you mostly been using this for Designing from scratch or rearranging existing layouts? What what? Uh, I use this for rearist, um, rearranging existing layouts. So I end up using the furniture, the shelving that they have. Okay. Um, and for our little libraries, a lot of them had homegrown shelving. So I draw up about fifteen different sizes of shelving rather than the mm. simple shelving I drew here. Uh -huh. um, I have drawn shelving that is literally eighteen feet long. Wow. Um, 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 one, one board, actually it was 12 feet long, one board. They did one board horizontally and they just put boards in between it to prop it up. <laughs> so I've ended up having to draw <laughs> shelves like that and so I'll, quite often these libraries they end up drawing about five or six or seven different sizes of shelving and then trying to rearrange them. It's very tricky. <laughs> and then, and, and I realize, you know, like, like we are here in Nebraska, you're, you're generally dealing with, with smaller libraries, but what's the, the largest square foot that you can think of that you've done this for? Um, I don't know the uh, would be. I can tell you the library, but I don't okay. know what the square footage would be. It'd be about oh um, sixty by by forty, I think. Okay. Would be about the about the size. Okay. And actually, I just did half of that library. Oh, okay. So so these are for small. So these are are for small libraries. Well, yeah, I mean, sixty would be the would be the, that half. Sixty by forty would be about would be that, that half of that library. Okay. Well, I mean, you could scale. It's just what's your patience level, I suppose. Is, is you yes, know, is, yes. Exactly. And I don't do multi. I haven't done any multi-story libraries or um, or things like that. And it cl okay. clearly, you, um, it's for. Uh, I do it really for rearranging. Sure. Basic rearranging. You, you, it's not. You're not producing a, a blueprint that you that an architect can actually use mm -hmm. to, to to or a, a, to actually build right, a library right. from scratch. Right. Yeah. Okay. And the, the other question I have, and this is this is this is my last question. It, it's kind of more of a, a taking a step back. You, you're definitely a, a proponent of kind of the the, um, the 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 grocery store model, as you put it, with the, with the in, important stuff around the outside edges. And I, I'm well aware of that model. Um, but we also hear a lot of the bookstore model, which sure. I would maybe overgeneralize to say that all the really important stuff that everybody wants is right up front. Right. So, I mean, maybe, I guess my question is, is why did you end up, why do you lean towards the grocery store model? Do you have a pros and cons? Kind of, could you just expound on that in general? The, um, the reason I have the grocery store model is that um, many of our libraries put uh, the new books right up front, and people will come in, they'll walk 10 feet inside the library, uh, they will pick up a new book, uh, they will then go to the circulation desk, which is in, which is 12 feet within inside the library, and then they won't go within the side of the library, further inside the library, and then they wonder why people don't walk to the back of the library. So the reason I distribute things around the library, the most important stuff, and put it toward the back is to pull people and give them a, an invitation, uh, a reason to move further back in the library and see what everything, mm -hmm. everything the library has. Um, uh, the bookstore, bookstores don't care whether you visit the back of the bookstore, uh, but libraries should. 
Uh, so, so that's why I distribute them. Um, I distribute them uh, through the library to give people a reason to walk toward the back and and see everything the library has. And mm -hmm. and and I mean I, I agree with you in principle. Have have you actually had a library put the new books display yes. in the back? And yes. Okay. And they and they and people do go back there. Um, I have had libraries that um, libraries that, where the board or the patrons are so insistent that the new books sit right up front uh -huh. uh, that that they that they cannot they will not move stuff back. I understand that, uh, okay. but if you can, I recommend moving uh, the the popular fiction or popular materials, and that includes DVDs, everything, further back in the library and draw people. Uh, Along a power path to the back, and then they put up displays of other stuff. If you display other stuff, people will check it out. Have, have you gotten a a sense of the patrons' reaction to doing that? Uh, patrons, uh, the ones who have who have made the change, the patrons like it. They at least they mm -hmm. claim to like it. They claim to like it. Although well, the librarians tell me the patrons claim to like it. I okay. Okay, that's good. Well, I, uh, I don't. Uh, they, you know, it's. It's uh, indirectly I hear sure. here from the from the through the librarian. Well, well, I'm sure if the patrons didn't like it, you'd hear about it. So <laughs> yes, yes, I hear the librarians who say they didn't like it. Generally, the librarians seem to like it, and uh, because the patrons do. Interesting. Okay. We do have a question related to that setup um, about where do you suggest that the circulation desk could be placed then in that model? Um, um, the circulation desk can be. Um, I'm not sure it really. I'm of two minds about it. I have. I don't really have a. Um, you know, if we're if we're if. I mean, if you put the new books up front, then I say you need to put the circulation in the back. Circulation is in the back to pull people back. I think you need to get people get some way to pull people to the back of the library. So, but but generally, I don't. I don't really have um, 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 an opinion. Mm -hmm. An opinion of where the circulation should go. Well, um, I think it could go, I've seen it in uh, successfully in several different places, many mm -hmm. different places. You, well, if 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 I and I'm just thinking off the top of my head here, although I I kind of did think about that when you mentioned it. I mean, even in the grocery store model, the registers are up front. The and, registers are up front and, because you're pulling people around the store with your because your your milk and your bread and your and your meat are are scattered around and people right. will, are are shopping all over the store. And, and I, I realize this will vary from size of library and, and staffing levels, but there, there maybe is a certain level of the circulation desk always has staff at it, and there's maybe a minimal amount of security with seeing the right. front door and being mm -hmm. that, that you might want, right. need to take into consideration. Yeah, that desk can serve, um, can, can, um, serve also as not just checking out the books and things, but also keeping an eye on the front door right. and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Right, right. And, and uh, you know, the... Uh, we do not have uh, libraries. Don't have a product that everybody wants, um, like like the milk and the bread. I mean, if people come in for the new books, or they come in for the DVDs, or they come in for the computers. They don't come in for everything, and so 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 you have to you have to make adjustments for it. But mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, security is is an issue, and you need to keep that in mind. So probably on this one, I probably put a, should have put the shelves yeah, running the other way, um, and I have no problem with that. All right, and I think we have one more tip that has come in from yes, the audience. Yes, um, someone did yes. say when we were talking about designing and drawing lines and things that if you hold your shift key while creating lines, it will hold them at a 45-degree angle as you're doing it. So if you need to right. keep things that, you know, exact that way, hmm. that's another right. um, tip for Excel use. All right. Right. Okay. Yeah, we can. So thank you. Yeah, well, thank you, Chris, very much. That was wonderful, and um, I think... Definitely, for me, on the, the second watching of this presentation, I think I, I definitely got a few more uh, things out of it. And, and uh, um, you know, I don't, I, I don't think I'll necessarily have the, the need to rearrange a, a library in the near future. But uh, <laughs> if somebody uh, calls me about it, this is uh, definitely something I, I will point them to. Yeah. So, uh, Chris, uh, thanks once again uh, for, for joining us today and, and sharing this with you. We will uh, provide links to all of this, and if you weren't able to get that, the, the, the short URL for, the, for this, we'll, this will be in the show notes. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, bring that up for everybody. So, Chris, we're going to take control back uh, f uh, just for the last couple of minutes of the show here and go ahead and mute Chris. I just have a couple of sh um, 
news items that I want to share. So let me, okay, Chris is muted. I have to right. make us the presenter. Yes. And show there we go. Okay. Um, so I just have a couple of links I want to talk about uh, today uh, to wrap up the show here. One is I know we have a lot of uh, Pinterest users that uh, watch the show on a regular basis. I, I have an account. I use it every once in a while. Uh, I don't use it all that much, but I was pointed to this service called um, Pinstamatic, and the idea behind it is that you can more creatively share content to Pinterest. So, for example, say you have a quote that you want to share. Uh, you click on the quote, and it will allow you to kind of um, customize the text and, and be a little more creative with it. It, does, of course, doesn't seem to be coming up right this instant. Uh, if you have a tweet that you want to share, um, of course, you know, hey, not working. But the idea is that you say, I want to share a location, or I want to share a picture, or an event, or a note, or a quote, or a website, and you would pick the type of thing you want to post, you would put in your information, and it will kind of reformat it and make your post a little prettier, a little more uh, interesting, hopefully to get a little more traction out of that. Um, that's pinstamatic.com, and at this point, I will just kind of back out of that because it was... It finally stopped trying to load. It's not, okay, it stopped trying to load, but <laughs> something is, let's see, quote, nope, still not working, but try it again maybe later today or tomorrow with that. Um, the other thing I want to mention is um, kind of more of a security news sort of thing. There is a, a new uh, bit of, uh, well, it's not really a virus, it's more called ransomware out there that you can get called Crypto Locker. Um, it's very interesting. It's very scary. I, I don't want to make everybody really nervous. Uh, but what it does is it, it takes your computer and encrypts all of your files so that you can't get to them unless you pay a ransom. And then once you pay the ransom, it unencrypts your files. Um, long story short, this is very scary. Um, I've got a link here to a short eight-minute video that kind of explains it and a web page uh, from Sophos that talks about it. Basically, a lot of the uh, same uh, recommendations for avoiding this is with almost anything else. Uh, one, make sure that your antivirus software is up to date. Two, make sure your security patches are up to date for your software and your operating system. Three, make sure you have backups for at least your data files. Um, really, if you get this, the only two ways out of it are to pay the ransom, which usually runs about 300 bucks, or to uh, wipe your system and reinstall everything. But if you have a good backup, that won't be necessarily as much of a problem. So just kind of a, some informational articles and videos there, something you may want to be aware of that is circulating out there right now. So that being said, uh, that is it for Tech Talk for this month. Okay, cool. All right. All right, then. Thank you very much, Michael and Chris, um, for being on the show this week. The, um, that was the... the, the spreadsheet or Excel to do your library that would have been great for me when I was in library school I had a library administration class that I had they instu instructed us to um, redesign reorganize a library space and I did it similar to what Chris is describing I had a big piece of poster board and little things that represented that I cut out little pieces of paper tables and chairs and shelves and I re yeah, rearranged them on my, my floor my parents had a set horrible. they bought that was like, you supplied the graph paper, mm -hmm. but it was all these punch-out squares and circles oh, and ovals see, yeah, that had things built things on. Yeah, yeah. So. so you could shuffle them around and right. stuff. But this is even better. Yeah, this is great. You can get it all online and saved and share it with people. Wish I had knew about this back then. But anyhow, so that will wrap up for today. The show has been recorded, and the links are already in our delicious account. So um, when this is all done and processed, you'll have all that information. Um, so I will, that will wrap it up for today. Um, I hope you will join us next week when our topic is the best new youth books of 2013. Um, our usual speaker about children's and young adult um, library uh, books, Sally Snyder here at the Library Commission will be doing her book talks. This is um, a combo repeat of her. She has two individual sessions at our Nebraska Library Association annual conference, one for children's and one for youth. And she graciously for us um, smooshes them together into one session. Um, and then presents it here on Encompass Live. So next week, all the new books that she came across um, for 2013, she will do um, a show on starting, as you can see there, preschool all the way up to teens. So um, hope you'll join us next week for that. 
And if you are a Facebook user, we are on Facebook, Encompass Live is, so I hope you will um, you can like us there. We um, post when our new shows are coming up, when the recordings are ready, um, when a show is ready to start for people to log in on the fly, um, anything else that is um, related or of interest to um, people attending Encompass Live. So um, like us on Facebook if you want to. Other than that, we are done for the day, for this morning. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.